Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving an interesting differential equation. We have y to the power dy equals x to the power dx. And we're going to try to find an expression for y, which hopefully can be expressed as a function of x. So y is a function of x. We're trying to solve for y. But why is this equation interesting? Because it has dy and dx in the exponents. Have you seen anything like this before? Probably not. If you did, let us know in the comment section. Now, to be able to solve a problem like this, we got to do a couple different things because this is kind of like looking a little bit non-standard. What is the meaning of y to the power dy? dy is kind of like an infinitesimal, like something super duper small, like delta y maybe. As delta y approaches zero, you know, we express these things with limits. Some people say dy over dx is not a fraction. Some people say it acts like a fraction, whatever. Wait a minute, did I say dy over dx? What is that supposed to mean? Well, let's start with that. Here's how the story begins. We have dy over dx representing the derivative of y with respect to x, which we can also call y prime. But the first notation, I think it belongs to Leibniz or Newton. I think it's Leibniz. Anyways, dy over dx is more descriptive because it tells you with respect to which variable you're going to differentiate. Especially, this is particularly important when you have a function of several variables, which kind of brings us to the topic of partial differential equations or PDEs. I've done, a, you know, quite a few, I think maybe a just small number of uh, PDE videos and go ahead and check them out. Now, to be able to handle this problem, we kind of need to know what dy over dx is because we don't really know what this is supposed to mean, right? If they told us, y to the power y prime, maybe, maybe that would be a little better, right? But still it's problematic because we have the derivative in the exponent. You don't want that. You want the derivative isolated. By the way, this is supposed to be y prime, not y. If I write dy over dx equals y, then that just becomes a differ another differential equation, okay? Not an identity. So to be able to solve this problem, here's what I'm gonna do. I can do this in a couple of different ways. Uh, for example, we can raise both sides, and I know this kind of sounds weird, but we can go ahead and take these two expressions and raise both sides to the power one over dx, whatever that means, right? And dx and one over dx are reciprocals, so their product is always one. If we don't care, even if they are infinitesimals or what is the other word? Operators, whatever, doesn't matter. Here, dy times one over dx, just like working like a fraction, it becomes dy over dx, and then this becomes x. Nice, better than the original, right? Now, what do you do with that? Well, we're still looking for dy over dx, so we kind of need to bring it down. Uh-oh, bring it down tells me that we need to use logarithms. Yes, logarithms can bring exponents down. That's what they do, right? Think about it. If you have log a to the power n, that becomes n times log a. It says it's very easy to prove by using definitions of logarithms. But what is the definition of logarithm, right? Well, if you have log a with base b equals x, this just is equivalent to b to the power x equals a. See, b is the base, x is the exponent, and a is the result. That's how you work with it. What about base e? That's called ln. What if I have ln a equals x? That means e to the power x equals a. Make sense? Okay, so here's what I'm gonna do. Since log properties work for all logs, all bases, including the natural log, which is base e, e is Euler's number, by the way, in case you didn't know, is about 2.7. I don't know the next digit, probably one or two maybe, something like that. I think it's a one. But anyways, we can go ahead and ln both sides. Let's do it, ln and ln. Now, when you do the ln, of course, you're allowed to move the exponent, dy over dx, multiply by ln y equals ln x. Beautiful. Now, you might be thinking, okay, let's just isolate dy over dx and continue with the solution, right? No, wrong, because how are you going to solve it? Like, I, I'm looking for a function whose derivative equals ln of the independent variable divided by ln of the dependent variable. What? This is too confusing, right? Let's go ahead and simplify this. Because this is a separable differential equation, the best kind you can get. Most probably you're not going to get this anyway, right? So let's go ahead and 
cross multiply and write this as ln y dy equals ln x dx. And this is just awesome, you know why? Because we can integrate both sides and solve for y. At least we can try to solve for y, right? But how do you integrate ln? That's a good question. And this is when the, what's it called? UV, VDU, fractions by, integration by parts. Yes, something like that. E, IBP, yes, integration by parts. <laughs> okay, I should remember that. So here's how it works. You call something U and then the rest becomes DV. So here's how it works. You have U times DV. So U is a function dv is the derivative of some function times dx because x is the independent variable so you kind of have to designate those and once you do you need to find du from u and you need to find v from dv to find du from u is actually really easy because all you have to do is differentiate or should i say differentials something like that to find v from dv you have to integrate. Maybe I should say differentiate, not differential, because that's what you do. But of course, you always add the dx because that's standard. Okay, you get the idea? But when you integrate, don't add a constant because we're going to do that at the very end. Make sense? But what is the integral of u dv equal to by integration by parts? What does IBP say? IBP says the integral of u dv is uv minus the integral of v du. And you might be wondering, like, where does this come from? easy. It comes from the derivative of the product. If you differentiate u times v, you get the derivative of u times v plus the derivative of v times u, right? And then if you multiply both sides by dx and put one thing on the other side and integrate, you'll get that formula. I'm not going to do it because it's easy to do from this point, hopefully. If not, ask questions and that's the best way to learn. So let's go ahead and apply it here. Let me go ahead and clean in this area so we can go ahead and use IBP which is integration by parts some people call it uh, DI method but you know in this case I wouldn't use the I mean you can use it if you want but I'm not gonna use it too bad so I'm gonna call this u and this will become DV automatically so I'm gonna write it like this u equals ln x and DV equals DX Notice that I'm keeping the u and dv on the left-hand side. Now my goal is to solve for du, which is going to be the derivative of ln x, which is 1 over x, multiplied by dx. And to find v from dv, you have to integrate, but think about it. If dv is dx, cross out the d's, uh-oh, don't do that. It's not rigorous at all. Don't do this on a test. But if you're kind of like doing this for fun, you can do it. It's v equals x. Now here's the coolest part. You are supposed to come up with uv first, so you're going to go ahead and multiply these, and then you're going to multiply by this. Or actually, not that, I should say. You're going to subtract this product. So there's going to be two products, this one and this one, and you'll subtract those products. Make sense? Okay, so here's what integral of ln x dx looks like. ln x times x, or I can write it as x ln x, minus the integral of v du, which is x times 1 over x dx. And that's awesome because x's cancel out. 1 is the derivative of x, so if you integrate 1 dx, you're going to get x plus c. So it's going to be x ln x minus x plus c. So that's how you integrate ln x dx. Awesome, right? Very easy. And a lot of times people will memorize this as a formula because it's just easier that way. So you don't have to go through these painful steps every time, right? But what about the integral of ln y dy? Exact same thing. Just replace x with y because it's a dummy variable. You're going to get the same thing. So the integral of ln y dy is just going to be y ln y minus y plus c. But we don't have, we have no guarantee that the constants are the same. So you can use, call this c sub 1 and call this c sub 2 and they don't have to be equal. They could be, but they don't have to be. Okay, great. Now these two things are equal, right? According to what we got from our separable differential equation. Yay. Let's go ahead and set them equal to each other. Y ln Y minus Y plus C2 is equal to X ln X minus X plus C1. Now, do you really want to solve for Y? And is there a way to solve for Y? I don't think so. It could be very problematic, but let me give you an idea. Maybe you can continue. You can do e to the power on both sides like this. e to the Y ln Y minus y plus c2 
equals e to the x ln x. Because if two things are equal, then e to the power of those two things are also equal. Why? e to the x is 1 to 1. Injective, right? So when you do something like this, e to the y power y ln y is going to give you something like this. e to the power ln y to the power y. But e to the power ln y is y. So this is going to become y to the y. Hmm. It's kind of problematic. I'm not sure if I want to go proceed with that. But... Again, it's up to you guys how you want to do this. So from here, we, we're probably going to get something like this. y to the y divided by e to the y. And then this is just going to become e to the power c2. And we're going to write it as another constant later. And this is going to be x to the x divided by e to the x. And then this could become uh, times e to the power c, c2 or c1. Which one is c1? Anyway, something like this. So we can call this k1. And we can call this k2 as our new constants. So they just become constants. And you can even put them on the same side. So they can become a single constant. Doesn't matter. No big deal. But here, I notice that we can write this as y over e to the power y times some constant. So let's go ahead and write it as k2 equals k1 times x over e to the power x. Now, here's my thinking. Can we use Lambert's w function on both sides? Let me go ahead and quickly tell you what it is. Lambert's W function is the inverse function for t e to the t, which gives us t when applied on something like t e to the t. So do you think we can bring it to that form? That's for you to find out because this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time in another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.